we now learn about recursive integration by parts and to do that we're going to work through a couple of examples the first of which is the following the integral of exponential of x times sine of x so what makes this integral I want to say different or difficult well the key thing is here we notice that both of the functions that are being multiplied those are exponential of x and sine of x neither one of those will disappear upon successive differentiation or integration here's what I mean let's remind ourselves of the actual formula that we use for integration by parts that was the integral of u dash of x times v of x equals to u of x times v of x minus the integral of u of x times v dash of x now you may remember that when we started integration by parts the whole idea behind this formula was the following we wanted to carefully choose u dash of x and v of x in the initial integral to make sure that the second integral on the right hand side of the formula was simpler to find or to work with but now the tricky thing with integrals like the one we have here the exponential of x times sine of x is that no matter which one we choose as u dash and v this simply doesn't get any simpler to work with indeed we could differentiate e of x a thousand times or integrate it a thousand times and we'd still be left with exponential of x similarly with sine of x no matter how many times we differentiate or integrate it we're still gonna be left with either a sine function or a cosine function and so the idea therefore or rather the trick behind recursive integration by parts is the following we're gonna name this integral we give it a name typically we're gonna call it I and upon successive integration by parts the second integral inside our formula this guy here will look like some scalar multiple of I will then end up with something looking like I equals to u times V plus or minus alpha I some scalar multiple of I we will then be able to rearrange and solve for I and I remember is the initial integral now don't worry I'm aware that sounds terribly confusing so let's go ahead and actually illustrate this method with a four step method for integrating using recursive integration by parts let's go ahead and get this done the first step step one is simply to name the integral so we go ahead and write let capital I that's the name we're giving equal to the integral of exponential of X times sine of X and we're done that's step one finished step two is to actually integrate this integral using integration by parts and to do that we'll go ahead and say let u dash of x equal to e of x and therefore v of x equals to sine of x as a result of that u of x will again just be equal to e of x and v dash of x will equal to cosine of x and so integration by parts allows us to state that the integral i which equals to the integral of e of x sine of x will equal to u times v so that's e of x times sine of x e of x times sine of x minus the integral of u times v dash so that's e of x times cosine of x done now we name this second integral this one here and we're gonna name it capital J so by the end of this second step we have the following I is equal to e of x times sine of x minus J and I'll go ahead and box that result and we're gonna call this e1 as in equation 1 or expression 1 that's step 2 done step 3 is to actually integrate J using integration by parts where J is equal to the integral of e of X times cosine of X and now here comes the I want to say the the tricky part 
you want to make sure that you choose u dash and v when you're integrating j you choose u dash and v so that you stick to the same family or thread of functions as you did in step two what i mean by that is the following in step two when we first integrated by parts we said let u dash of x be e of x which then turned into u of x was e of x again well without even thinking we want to make sure that the u family stick to the exponential functions so we're going to go right ahead and say okay e of x has to be u dash of x similarly in step two we had v of x was sine of x which turned into v dash which was cosine of x so without even thinking cosine of x has to stick to that v family and will be v of x so we go ahead and write let u dash of x equal to e of x and v of x equal to cosine of x that would mean that u of x equals to e of x and v dash of x equals to negative sine of x so integration by parts sorry I'll just separate what we had written at the beginning here with a sort of black scribble there going back to this integration by parts allows us to state that j must equal to so it was the integral of e of x times cosine of x equals to u times v so that's e of x times cosine of x minus the integral of u times v dash so that's e of x times negative sine of x we can tidy up that second integral a bit to taking the negative sign out of there leading us to e of x times cosine of x plus the integral e of x times sine of x but now looking at this carefully we can see that this second integral e of x times sine of x is the same as the initial integral we were after that's i so we can go ahead and write i so at the end of this third step we have the following j is equal to e of x times cosine of x plus i and I'll go ahead and box that result and we'll call that e2 as in equation or expression 2 and we now move on to the fourth and final step so I'll just write 4 and this involves combining the two results we found e1 and e2 so remember e1 was the following we had i was equal to e of x times sine of x minus j and we found what j was in e2 that was in step 3 equation 2 and that was the following that's e of x times sine of x minus in brackets or parentheses e of x times cosine of x plus i and that leads us to e of x times sine of x minus e of x times cosine of x minus i and i should have written i's on the left hand side here there we go we now gather all the capital i's on the left hand side so that leads us to 2i on the left hand side equals to e of x times sine of x minus e of x times cosine of x and now on the right hand side we can go ahead and place exponential of x as a factor which leads us to 2i equals to e of x times sine of x minus cosine of x and finally dividing throughout by 2 we get the answer i the integral that we were after is equal to e of x over 2 times sine of x minus cosine of x and we're done we've just integrated this product of two functions using recursive integration by parts now we could of course add a generic constant of integration at the end here we haven't done that here but we could let's look at another example as a second example of recursive integration by parts we're going to integrate the following the integral of cosine of x times exponential of 2x 
Now we're going to follow the same four steps as we did previously. And let's go right ahead and do it. So, step one, we name this integral. And we're going to call it capital I as usual. So we'll just write let capital I equal to the integral of cosine of x times exponential of 2x. Done. The second step is to integrate this by parts. So let's go ahead and say let u dash of x equal to cosine of x and v of x equal to e of 2x. Now it doesn't matter which choice we make here, we could have called u dash of x e of 2x, doesn't matter in this case. In any case, here we'll have u of x equals to sine of x and v dash of x equals to 2 times e of 2x. Done. So integration by parts leads us to the following. i is equal to, of course, the integral of cosine of x times e of 2x, which equals to u times v, so that would be sine of x times exponential of 2x, so that's sine of x times exponential of 2x minus the integral of u times v dash, so that would be sine of x times 2 times e of 2x. And we can clear this up a little bit, or I should say take the 2 outside of the integrand to write this is sine of x times e of 2x minus 2 times the integral of sine of x times exponential of 2x. Done. And now we go ahead and name this second integral j. So I'll just do that there. So at the end of this second step, step 2, we have the following. i is equal to sine of x times exponential of 2x minus 2j. And let's go ahead and box that. And we're going to call this e1, as in equation 1 or expression 1. Okay, we now move on to the third step, step 3. And in this case, we need to use integration by parts to integrate j, which is equal to the integral of sine of x times exponential of 2x. The important thing here, as far as our choice for u dash and v is concerned, is to stick to the same family or thread of functions. So in step 2, we let u dash of x equal to cosine, which turned into u, which was sine. So we want to make sure our u dash here for the integral of j is in the same family, meaning to say we want to make sure we call u dash of x the sine function we have here. So let's do that. We write let u dash of x equal to sine of x and v of x equal to exponential of 2x. Then u of x will equal to negative cosine of x and v dash of x will equal to 2 times e of 2x. And now using integration by parts, we can therefore state that j, which remember was the integral of sine of x times exponential of 2x, will equal to u times v, so that's negative cosine of x times e of 2x, so that's negative cosine of x times exponential 2x, minus the integral of u times v dash. So that's negative cosine of x times 2 times exponential of 2x. Now we can definitely get rid of a negative sign in that integral as well as the 2 which can be taken outside of it. So that leads us to negative cosine of x times e of 2x plus 2 times the integral of cosine of x times exponential of 2x. And now we recognize that second integral. Indeed, the integral of cosine of x e of 2x is the integral we were looking for at the beginning. That's i. So at the end of this third step, step 3, we have the expression j 
is equal to negative cosine of x times exponential of 2x plus 2i. And let's go ahead and box that result. And we'll call that e2, as in equation or expression 2. Now that we've done that, we move on to the fourth and final step. So I'll just write 4. And here we combine equation 1 and equation 2 to rearrange it into an equation for i, which we solve. So let's do that. At the end of step 2, remember we had i is equal to sine of x times e of 2x minus 2j. And at the end of step 3, we had equation 2, which was an expression for j. So let's use that here. That's equal to sine of x times e of 2x minus 2 times, in brackets or parentheses, negative cosine of x times e of 2x plus 2i. Now we open everything up and distribute the negative 2. That would be equal to sine of x times exponential of 2x plus 2 cosine of x exponential 2x minus 4i. And I should write i on the left-hand side there. There we go. We now rearrange everything. We bring all the i's on the left-hand side. So that would become i plus 4i, which is 5i equals to sine of x times e of 2x plus 2 cosine of x times e of 2x. And the left hand side is fine. The right hand side, on the other hand, we can definitely go a little further there and place exponential of 2x as a factor. So let's go ahead and do that. We can write 5i is equal to exponential of 2x times sine of x plus 2 cosine of x. And finally, we divide throughout by 5, which leads us to i is equal to exponential of 2x over 5 times sine of x plus 2 cosine of x, and we're done. Now we could, of course, we didn't do it in the previous example, but we could add a generic constant of integration to our result, as I've just done there. And there we have it. I'll just box that result. And that is the final answer. So that's how to do recursive integration by parts. It's worth working through these two examples a few times to really let those four steps sink in. And there we have it. I really hope that helps.